What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop, and this is... Rolly. And today, we're gonna be talking about a whole host of issues, from bronze watches to the watches of famous celebrities and a bunch of style things in between. So let's get into it. Welcome back to Liquor Run. Let's do it. Boom. Boom, watch fan. All right, Daniel, let's pour a glass of wine. What are we drinking here? We'll get more into the details of the wine in the middle yes. of the episode, but what are we drinking? Let, we're gonna have some rosé. It's rosé season. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring, but we're it's, gonna drink some. <laughs> you, you, may, you may be able to tell, we may have had a drink before this, but uh, I was talking to the gentleman just before, Paul, you know Paul, and we we're talking about uh, really the times you have associated with watches, right? Uh -huh. It's not just the watches themselves, but, uh, but the friends you make, and you know, really, while we have a great relationship, a lot of that is to credit to watches, right? Liquor run, I, I think that's pretty cool. All right, so anyway, uh, what are we drinking? We're drinking a rosé, a French rosé mm -hmm. from the Rhone Valley. Mm -hmm. And where's the Rhone Valley? The Rhone Valley sits in the south, southern part of France. Okay. Okay, and uh, a lot of you guys may know uh, Côte de Rhone, uh, you know, broad Appalachian red wine, yep. okay, but Chateauneuf du Pape. Yep. Okay, delicious wines, yep. Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre. So the, this you wine. Mean Shiraz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Syrah. But, but this is uh, from a family winery, and um, you know, they're making it probably from Grenache, Mouvedre, mm -hmm. the, so the, 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 the typical, the typical uh, you know, Rhone grapes. Yep. And uh, lovely, lovely example uh, uh, yeah, for sure. of, 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 of rosé. And what is this bottle running in the liquor store? Uh, $13. Hey guys, 13 bucks, outdoor wine, really refreshing. Uh, it may be a thunderstorm today, but in general, um, good pick, right? Having people over, uh, impress them with a- uh, Delicious, this? This delicious is, How wine. do you pronounce this? Chassinet. Chassinet. Cartier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much of the watch they could choose in a foreign language, French, whatever it might be, German, and uh, you know, I, I can't pronounce these things all that well. I do my best, but I often do butcher them by accident. I do right. my best though. So anyway, let's, let's get into today's conversation. Uh, I want to start off, you know, strong here. Let's start off with a, with a big, big conversation, right? Provenance in watches. In yes. the watch industry, you know, one thing that has really become extremely popular in the last few years has been who owned this watch before me, right? Uh, Paul Newman's mm -hmm. Rolex Paul Newman. It's a great example. Watch sold $18 million. Uh, Jack Nicklaus, uh, you got uh, Steve McQueen, you, you know, Marlon Brando. Um, these famous celebrities' watches are, are coming now into center stage and, uh, and, and they're demanding significant premiums. You know, what do you think about provenance in watches? You know, does it matter? Would you ever care? Um, tell me about your thoughts. I suppose if you're a collector, uh, <laughs> it's all about the history. Right. Yeah, consider this. Collecting Thomas Jefferson's Bordeaux's. Which the, the Koch brothers did uh, do. Right. I mean, some of them right. were fake, but. Right, some of them were fake. <laughs> but, but, but the fact that you can say, yeah. right, the allure to all of that, and if you're a serious collector, yeah. you're willing to shell out the dollars <laughs> because I have something no one else has. So I think you're right, and I think you're right be, be, to, to, to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, real provenance is, is real. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Thomas Jefferson's underwear would be valuable, and, and different things are of different value. Right, Thomas Jefferson's pen would be of significant value. He may have been a wine guy, so that's fine. But but once you get into you know certain characters and and, and, and the items they may have owned, they may have owned them in, in passing. It meant nothing to them. Right, uh, uh, for example, Marlon Brando's GMT was in Apocalypse Now. That is significant. Mm -hmm. That's a real. That's a thing people care about. Now, Fred Astaire's Cartier Tank Centre was bought by Fred Astaire, but given to somebody. So, is that really provenance? You know, like it, it, some things just pass through your hands. I don't care how important you are. I feel like the provenance, while hyped up by you know by the people that are selling something, <laughs> really isn't very important. Uh, and the other issue that is coming up now is. How frequent is it that people are just being are being canceled, right? It's socially, you know, cancel culture is a thing, right. right? So how quickly is it that your thing that was sold at a 10x markup could very quickly be worth nothing if it's found out that maybe you weren't uh, a, 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 a saint? You know, that's very dangerous. Right. I mean, would you want to own Roman Polanski's, you know, watch? Well, some people would for some reason. <laughs> it, it's, it's the truth. Andy you know, Warhol's Cartier. 
Right, Andy Warhol's Cartier tank should, in theory, I don't know if it's been sold, I, I don't remember it being sold, but it should, in theory, be extremely valuable. He went so far as to speak about his Cartier. He talked about the Cartier tank as, uh, you don't necessarily wind your tank, you wear it because it's the watch to wear. Right. Like, it meant something right. to him. Uh, Truman Capote, as well, wore a Cartier tank. That's cool to me. But if tomorrow we found out that Andy Warhol was a piece of shit, I mean, did I really want to put in a hundred or hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars into something that is so flimsy? That's the most. That's the most flimsy investment today. That's all part of speculation, right? And, I don't and, want to be and, involved and, and, in that business. Yes, I really don't. Right? For your question, provenance. Such a great question. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but today, because of the technology we have and the research people are doing, and and, and in many you know, in many ways for good and for bad, uh, because things can be misleading and, and and people are very quick to judge, and there isn't really a, such a thing as a burden a burden in the court of public opinion, right. I would personally recommend to you to stay away and to be very careful uh, with the right. provenance game. Uh, moving on, let's go into something that is more uh, style related. Loafers, right? Yes. Talk about your passion for loafers and, and if you do have an option for affordable loafers, yeah. let's, let's go into that because that was the question. So let's, let's talk about, yeah, just a classic shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that if you're looking for an affordable loafer, yep. wear a bass loafer, a Weijin bass loafer. You took the words out for of about one hundred and ten dollars. Yeah. You get yourself a legitimate, oh, yeah. you know, well-made, uh, well-constructed loafer. That quarter mil loafer. Quarter mil. I mean, yeah. they're beautiful and That's they'll great. last you. They'll last you forever. Yeah. Uh, if you want to step up, look no farther than than Allen Edmonds. Right. It's great. You know, and and and. There, you've got a truly American brand. Uh, everything is made in the United States. Well, a little bit less every day. Okay, well, yeah, a little unfortunately, bit. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the truth. Unfortunately. I mean, yeah, but we're talking about um, just American companies right. in general. Yeah, it's an American company, uh, great craftsmanship, uh, and, and uh, they stand by their product forever. Yep. And uh, they're recrafting service. And they recraft service. Yep. And, and, and then go and, a little bit further up the chain. It, well, oof, wow. You want to well, go. One step up from, you know, Allen Edmonds would be you and I both own the Alden 986. In, Alden's uh, in, 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 in Cordovan, Cordovan Shell. In, both Cordovan uh -huh. Color it, and Cordovan yeah. uh, Shell. Yeah. Um, great, great loafer. I, you, you find them heavy, right? I do. I find, that, I find them heavy, uh, especially uh, when I travel and the, I'm, I'm walking through the airport. They're clunky. I, they're a little bit clunky. They, I will say this, I have broken them in. Uh, and they shine like there's no there's no better shine. It's an, no. it's an incredible shoe. Yeah. I tend to wear I wear a thicker sock if I'm going to wear those guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but truly that that is that that's that's uh, I think the pinnacle of a, of, a, of a loafer. It's it's, it's, an, um, it's a truly American New England you know, right. chunky you right. know, loafer. The one you know. Uh, uh, Thing that I would have considered, I, I think I gave you this over as a gift. The one thing I would consider would be, you sh I should have gotten you the Brooks Brothers version of the Alden Loafer because the Brooks Brothers version was actually unlined, so it's a little bit lighter. Oh, uh, okay. Again, would have been know, a big I, difference at the time. It's beautiful, you know, whatever. I, I have the same one you do. I, yeah. I don't have. I have the uh, lined yeah. version as well. So, so you know, what are you going to do? Uh, Further than that, I feel free. You know, I mean. <laughs> bottom line is, I would have started as well with Bass Weijun. Those are great. Yes, um, I've owned a couple of pairs. I love them to death. Literally, there's no excuse uh, in my mind for for uh, wanting a good loafer and not having one. Mm -hmm. Because for 110 bucks, you can own a fantastic loafer. Yes. They come in, I believe, three different colors, mm -hmm. maybe even more now. You know, but you have black, you have burgundy, and you have you know brown. They, they come in spectator, spectator, which I actually like yes. a lot. I, I don't have the, I haven't had the audacity yet <laughs> to buy a pair of spectators, but I really do like them. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, absolutely. Further than that, you know, you want to go into Gucci, I love the 1953s. Those are my favorite. He wears a lot of the Jordans. I do. Um, those are a longer, sleeker pair. Um, I'm more of an old man, you know, in 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 that sense, you know. But um, and if you want a, almost a, a, like a, a bespoke loafer, then I suggest. Crockett and Jones. Yeah, Crockett and Jones, you know, is a fantastic company. I, I actually don't own a pair. Um, you you own a couple, and, and they're beautiful. Very many, guys. If you guys don't know out there, I am. He, we are huge into clothing and shoes, so that's why the question was inspired. Um, can someone with a lot of tattoos be a Cartier person? Yes. Totally. And yes. Maybe, it's actually probably cooler than someone without tattoos. Imagine it just David yeah. Beckham. You know, he's heavily tattooed. Uh, yeah. A great suit, yeah. fantastic shirt, tie, no tie, wearing a Cartier, and maybe even driving his, his, his Bentley, his Phantom. Yeah. I mean, it, it works absolutely. It's a Rolls Royce. You, uh, you swine. I know, did I say Bentley? It's Rolls you, Royce. You swine. <laughs> My thoughts on the matter are very simple. Um, no one wants to be a stereotype, right? 
and uh, and and to add color to your look. When I say color, I mean uh, I mean layers, right? To add layers and show that you're not a stereotype. Meaning the tattooed person, you know, you would assume would be sons of anarchy. You know, no. just just bracelets and and no watch, and they sell heroin and they right. deal guns, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's a stereotype. It's a TV show. Uh, and and hey, if you're that pretty, hey, listen, if any Hell's Angels are watching this, salute. You guys are great Americans. You know what I mean? but, but the truth is, uh, I would never want anyone to pigeonhole themselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's the old page hole. Exactly. You know? Right. Uh, you, we're supposed no. to be. The more we learn, the yeah. more we consume, the more educated we become, we become more dynamic individuals, right? So if you're the tattooed guy that yeah. also likes to, you know, uh, is really delicate with their food plating, you know, and like to wear a Cartier, it's fantastic. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, we, we are all, in some way, you know, in our taste, oxymoronic. You know, we're all uh, different, you know, That's you know right. what I mean? Like, it's, um, I, I, I love it, you know? Mm -hmm. as, as much as I love Cartier, and as much as I love wearing these little tiny watches, I would really love to own, uh, yeah, I know it's it's not Harley, but I'd love to own an Indian, you know? It's it's different. It, well, that, that you know? begs the question, because you're not tattooed, could you not ride, ride a Harley right, yeah. or, or an Indian? 100%, you, you know? know? You, you can absolutely do it. The only yeah, reason I, yeah. I haven't bought but, one is because, you know, we live in suburban <laughs> New Jersey and you couldn't drive it for three blocks. Block, so I was right. not a stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have already. But uh, the answer is yes. If, if you have tattoos uh, and you are a you know beefy you know guy you know that's that you would never imagine you know whatever buy a Cartier, do all the things that you know people wouldn't expect you to do, and hey, you you might you might like it. Right. Uh, and if you don't, then so what? You know, you, you, you sell the watch. It's, it's not a big deal. Okay. Oris has released a a bronze watch with a bronze bracelet. I'm going to show it to you right now. This is obviously it's a chronograph. Uh, there there exists. You know, plenty of, of bronze watches. Mm -hmm. There's a bronze, you know, Panerai. It's called the Bronzo. There's the Tudor Black Bay Bronze. There, there are bronze watches up and down the line in the watch community. Um, but Oris has released this with a bronze bracelet, which is totally new. Okay. So first of all, first impressions. What do you think about just the aesthetic? Forget anything else. What do you uh, think about the aesthetic? The aesthetic is very nice. What, what do you uh, think about it? I, I like the finish of it. it actually, it, it, I don't know how much this watch is. In fact, I don't know much about Oris, quite mm -hmm. frankly. But just the look of it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it's trying to play off of more expensive watches. Yeah, of course. But but uh, but yeah, it, it it has an interesting it has an interesting look. I mean, you're showing me different photos of it, and, yep. and depending on the photo, uh, I either love it or or maybe don't like it as much. So so I love bronze. Right? Yeah. I love this whole use of alternative material. It's it's less common. Mm -hmm. um, I I happen because because I'm more dressy. I happen to not, you know, love uh, the big, you know, bronze sports watches. Mm -hmm. Um, I love, yeah, I would love to see, you know, I know it's oxymoronic, but I'd love to see a Cartier tank in bronze, you mm -hmm. know, and I know it's ridiculous, but, 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 but to set precedent, Cartier actually made a few, you know, sterling silver tanks on trays back in the 1920s. So, you know, uh, this idea of alternative materials uh, isn't so foreign. Okay. It's uncommon, but it's not so foreign. Uh, so I love the idea of bronze. It, it adds color. It's, it's tasteful. And I don't think that someone um, that wants color in their watch collection, meaning in the case, should need to spend $30,000 on a gold watch. There should be this alternative. And I like the idea that bronze is rougher. Now, I don't love the way it colors always, you know, the way it patina, uh, patinates. Um, that's great for some people. For me, a light patination is great. Once it becomes very heavy, I, I, I opt out. I'd like to clean it. Um, but it, it, it's a good looking watch. One of the great things that you would appreciate about this watch and, and Oris's in general with these rivet bracelets uh, is the, the bracelets are very thin. Mm -hmm. They're very elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of brands have trouble with that. A lot of brands' bracelets are very thick and clunky. Uh, which I don't appreciate. Well, I, that, that's a huge selling point for me then. Okay, next question. Uh, cowboy boots, the tuxedo. It's a classic in Texas. I don't really own dress shoes. What do you think? Well, I, I have, I work and I have a lot of good friends down, you know, in the South, in Dallas and yep. Houston and yep. Arizona, Texas, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and I know that that they'll wear their their cowboy boots yeah. for to a formal affair. I've Ooh. been with them, yeah. and I got to be honest with you, when they do it right, they yeah. looks great. And, totally. and I, I say go for it. Yeah. It's an awesome friggin' look, man. If that's who you are, yeah. then be it. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think that um, if if we're you know interested in it, of course, yeah. it costs money and it takes time. But um, the more individual you can be and the more personal you can be, the better. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're a Southern and you like the idea of cowboy boots, mm -hmm. then you should wear them with your tuxedo. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think you should take time to figure out what are the right boots, right. Uh, how, how, how should my pants be cut? These are things that I look at, uh, but if you don't want to look at that, it's just fine. But if you're really considering, you know, taking this very seriously, uh, make everything that you wear intentional. If I'm wearing this aggressive cowboy boot, how wide should my lapel be? Sure. I mean, what type of bow tie should I wear? You know, again, we're getting dramatic, you know, but <laughs> that's, that's how I look at it. I mean, the same way that, you know, dinner jackets come in, you know, come in a, a couple of colors, like a black, blue, uh, obviously, you know, cream is a classic color. If you love the Southwestern look, um, I would be, I think even a, one of those Southwestern pattern jackets would be beautiful Absolutely. in a dinner jacket. And Absolutely. yeah, would it look out of place uh, at a gala? Yeah, it would look out of place. But that's a great thing. It's a great look. It's great to be individual. Yeah. I really don't like a group of people or whatever it might be that are just homogenous. I just don't. It's not interesting to me. Right. It's, it's just not. People that are wearing the same watch, wearing the same shirt, people right. that have the same opinions or lack thereof. I mean, it's... It's horrible. Yes, rock on, dude. Cowboy yeah. boots, yes. whatever. I mean, Ralph Lauren wears cowboy Thumbs boots, uh, yeah, exactly. white wash jeans, and a exactly. tuxedo jacket. Exactly, you know? he's, he's done it, yeah. His expression. Are you planning on selling straps with your quick release systems? Um, first of all, yes, we do sell our watch straps with quick release pins, um, you know, period, end. Which of our straps do you like? Uh, putting you on the spot. You have the Sark, I know that. I have the Sark. Although you haven't worn as much because you have your bracelet on your on your uh, uh, day chest, the yellow gold day chest. Correct. I, I love the the green alligator strap. That's the Jurassic. That's a beautiful strap. You know what I what I love about that strap is uh, uh, alligator tends to be a very formal you know material. You know it's very you know rich and whatever. But when you put it in a color like military green and do it with a matte finish. It comes off much yeah. more uh, just tough and rough and, you know, Jurassic. Well, by the way, we didn't do a wristwatch check. What are you wearing today? Ah, I look at this. I'm, I'm wearing my 36-millimeter uh, Breitling Colt. How are you liking that watch? You wear it like every day. <laughs> I'm wearing it every day. Summertime, pool and time. Pool time. This orange uh, military strap uh, is probably going to be brown by Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I love, yeah. did I not say to you how badly I wanted an orange strap? Totally. And it looks great. <laughs> yeah, it, looks it, great. it does. It, it looks, it looks, yeah, I love it. And it's yeah. great to give some of your less worn watches time. You yeah. Know, you, you haven't worn that watch regularly in a while. And it's, Long time. I, I love to see that, you know, being worn. A minimum, yeah. at, at least five, seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. I'm wearing uh, my Rolex Digest 1601. Yep. yep. Um, stunning watch. Stunning. It literally does not get old at all. Right. That blue dial is, is beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. It's and gorgeous, that. and it looks uh, fantastic in almost any strap that you put on this on this uh, beauty. Absolutely. Um, anyway, Daddyo, thank you for uh, doing this episode. Thank you for I having me here. your time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Look at Run. Uh, we love you all very much. If you liked this episode, uh, go ahead and like it. If and send love. questions. And, and send questions as well. Please comment down below with more questions you would like uh, my father and I to answer here. And if you love watches, subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris, and we'll see you all soon. Ciao.